welcome to my part two of my zoo tour. I'm Vanessa, your guide and fellow lover of animals, both big and small. And this is our pet show. So we've come to visit one of the big five, the African elephant. As you can see, they're actually walking, so we're trying to catch up to them. And I think they're actually going to be fed. Let's go have a look. This is going to be insane. Interesting fact about elephants before we reach the feeding. Um, their front two feet and their back two feet are different shapes. So the back two feet are actually the shape of a rugby ball and the front two feet are actually more circular shaped. This is going to be cool guys. So here they all. They're actually all coming to get fed. How beautiful are these animals? Yeah. Look at their long tusks. Yeah. They're fighting yeah. over their food. So we've come to our next animal at the zoo, which is the king vulture. It says here that their diet, which you can see they're actually busy eating at the moment, they are carnivores and scavengers eating meat. Very interesting. So it actually really smells um, very interesting because of course it's meat and it looks like they're having a good lunch. It's so interesting because normally we know that some vultures have no hair or feathers on their head and these ones actually have very colorful heads. So we've come to pay a visit to the Fenic Fox. An interesting fact, they're actually considered the smallest of the wild canids. How cute. Our next animal that we've come to visit is the caracal and it says here that the threats to the species are major threat to the survival of the caracal is its habitat loss and you'll see that there's one right there under the tree. Hi! It's busy relaxing, having a lazy Saturday.
follow me everyone, we found this really cool spot at the zoo. So over here, it's got a sign that animals in this enclosure are under treatment by the zoo veterinary team. How cute. And then you'll see they've actually got one of the animals over there in the enclosure. So this is an African civet. We've stopped at the old carnivore enclosure. So this is actually the Joburg Zoo first enclosure for lions. And it came about in the 1904 which is actually very, very interesting. It says two large enclosures with four compartments were built in 1913 to accommodate the increase in numbers. So this is actually kind of cool. You'll see that it like makes a circular thing around where you can walk. And this is where they used to keep the lions and all the carnivores. I actually like that they've got it here for like a viewing point which is actually really really interesting. So we've come to pay a visit to the flamingos. If there's one bird I could choose to be it would be a flamingo because it's all pink. I mean it's beautiful and my favorite color is pink. So it says there, an interesting fact is that standing on one leg is actually the most comfortable resting position for a flamingo. That's really interesting. Let's have a look and spot which flamingos are standing on one leg. So there's actually quite a few of them standing on one leg. And boy, does it smell interesting here. So we've come to the reptile enclosure. Now this is really cool. So you'll see here, it asks, what is a reptile on this sign? And it says here it is animals with scales, animals that lay eggs in most cases, and animals that have internal fertilization. So let's go have a look and see what we can find in the reptile enclosure. Follow me. Ooh, a baby crocodile. How cute. It's actually sitting so still in the water that it looks like a statue. So we've come to our first snake, the West Africa Gaboon Viper. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So you'll see it's actually sleeping right there. It looks really, really creepy, guys. Oh my gosh. Thank goodness it's in an enclosed area. So the next reptile we've come to is the wrinkle snake. So you'll see each snake has a venom scale and this one is considered as one of the most venomous snakes. Let's find it in its shelter. so small so we've come to visit the hippopotamus so you can kind of see it's right here i think it's having a bit of a snooze but look how big and beautiful this hippo is it's stunning <gasps> look it's coming up for water i mean for air So hippos can't actually breathe underwater, so when they need air, they of course lift their head up and grasp a few breaths of air. Cool, on to our next animal. We managed to find another hippo, how cute. This one's also busy sleeping in the water.
we found a lonely Dassey. How cute. Oh, and off he goes. Bye bye Dassey. Off to see some more animals. That's it everyone, part two of my zoo trip has come to an end. I hope you enjoyed and learned many new things about many different animals. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, I love hearing from you, and subscribe to the channel as it really helps a lot. And remember, ring that bell to receive notifications of when I upload my next video. See you soon my pet familia, ciao!